we are with uh, topic 3 topic 3 okay we started money market now today i really begin a complex instrument commercial paper and uh, what is that other thing you have seen commercial paper and uh, certificate of deposit now i get into something much more complex so today i begin slightly more complex money market instrument which government uses government it is a government instrument jilted jilt edged market instrument government uses to raise funds this is called treasury bill this is called treasury bill so I am going to talk about treasury bill silent please treasury bill is also a finance bill do you understand the meaning of finance bill these are the words you will get in books treasury bill is also a finance bill finance bill means it is a paper which is used to raise money to borrow money it is called a bill because this is the common terminology but it is not a bill like you go to a store you buy goods and you get a bill for payment. So that kind of a bill is a real bill because the real bill carries some real transactions in good say a company purchases raw materials from a company in Tamil Nadu company a manufacturing company in Kanpur purchases some raw materials from a company in Tamil Nadu since Tamil Nadu is far away and there is a payment problem immediate today it is not much of a problem I will talk about this later they create something called commercial bills these bills are real bills because this is a real transaction the goods will be shipped by road or by railways and they would arrive and there is this agreement has to be there for payment these are called real bills but finance bills are bills which are purely a monetary transaction there is no real goods changing hands therefore financial bills are different kind of bills so it is a finance bill first thing to remember just like CP and CD but it is also a promissory note it is also a promissory note what is a promissory note is a paper on which something is written we call loosely note the currency but a promissory note is which promises to pay something all right so it's which is our currency also a note promissory note promises to pay you something treasury bill is also a promissory note in simple words it's like a bond it promises you to pay some amount say as an interest or whatever and um, when it borrows money from you and it has a maturity also so it is a usance promissory note also. So it is just like a commercial paper and a CD except this is a government bill so it has enormous importance for a macroeconomy for the money market it is enormous importance because when government goes into a borrowing mode it is not a company's borrowing mode company's borrowing mode is much smaller compared to when a government goes into a borrowing mode and when government budgets are having deficits they are usually thousands and lakhs of crores all right so a borrowing mode there using treasury bill to fund it to finance it is a big issue it does influence the market the interest rates etc it's very important all right so i'm going to go through slowly treasury bill so it is usually the government bill a finance bill and a promissory note like cp but interestingly enough at least in India I do not know about all other countries 
practices, some countries may have similar practices. After all, India was born after many countries. So, India adopted many things from the western countries. Our constitution was um, adopted from various western democracies. The British constitution, the American constitution etcetera. Our parliamentary system is very much borrowed from the British parliamentary system, the concepts etcetera. Similarly, our central bank was um, designed after some other central bank, maybe Bank of England. Now, normally not so much these days, for years central bank of India used to take the responsibility of selling the government of India's treasury bill. Government of India is treasury bill, but the responsibility of selling it was with RBI. So, RBI was acting like an underwriter for the government. So, when a company sells shares, it does not directly go to you and me and knock on your door and sell shares. It appoints underwriters who take the responsibility of selling the shares. So, RBI was acting like an underwriter for government bills for a long time, the treasury bills. Anyway, so I will go to all that. Now, historically, which is not anymore true, so far my understanding goes there has been two types of treasury bills the government of India has been selling. One called ad hoc treasury bills, ad hoc treasury bills. The other one is called ordinary or regular treasury bills. So, there are two kinds of treasury bills the government of India has been selling. And, uh, how it worked. Ad hoc means essentially what it implied was government of India was selling it whenever it required funds. And what it did was simply what we call deficit financing in macroeconomics. Government does not have money, government does not have money in its account anywhere either with RBI or with other banks. Government needs cash, I am talking about the 60s and the 70s of Indian economy or even 80s. What was what used to happen? Government needs funds, it would knock on RBI say here lay low ad hoc bill. Means, it is guaranteed by central government and RBI would say oh what can I do? I am your central bank. One of my job which you will see in the next topic is to serve you. Not like a commercial bank which behaves the other way, I am supposed to serve them, their behavior. But RBI being central banks, central government's bank, first job is to serve central government. So, what it used to do, okay, sir, I am we are accepting, say the finance minister knocks on them, phone calls them up. Ad hoc will chale hai, kuch paper, likha hai, itna itna amount. Thik hai? Okay. What RBI would do? Does not have cash, starts printing, hand them over. Now, if you go to a bank and say I do not have cash in my account, give it to me, bank would not print and give it to you. But central bank can do that for the central government in particular. I do not know so much about state governments, they also sell treasury bills, but I do not know much about that in interaction. Their ad hoc bills became notorious in some sense in India, because they were sold any time any amount central government wanted. And then sometimes RBI would say oh too much of printing going on. So, they would then take the responsibility that maybe 50 percent of the cash they would print and 50 percent they would go to state governments, semi government departments, people like you and me maybe foreign governments all right to get the money. 
So it would act like an underwriter. One is like a financier, okay, and the other part was like an underwriter. Okay, okay, I'm going to try to sell this on your behalf to whoever can is willing to buy them. Right now, famous U.S. federal U.S. government treasury bills sold all over the world. Main investors are like China. They scan that rupee hai nahi. So they are going to China, etc., and buying them. Europe may be purchased nahi, or Europe doesn't have funds. In fact, Europe is asking China to help them out. It's fascinating stuff going on in the Western world. Europe is asking China to help them out. U.S. is asking China to help them out. They are the main investors in treasury bills. Their own country, banks, etc. How much they purchase, I don't know. But I have heard the largest investors are China. One of the largest investors is China. So this is the. Ad hoc bill and ad hoc bill had a very funny thing. It has no market related relationships. It had a fixed return, which either the central bank, or the RBI, or RBI in concentration with the central government would fix it. No market determined. So how would they fix it? You think the discount rate or the interest rate? Very low. So the interest bur burden of the government is low. They are short of cash. They want as much cash as possible from elsewhere. And when they fix the return, they had the power. They would fix it very low. It's not market determined. Okay. All right. In the market, it would have been very high because how much of money existed in elsewhere in the economy to buy central government bills often on a regular basis? It wasn't possible. All right. And it was very low, and you won't believe me. The rate of interest was pegged. Pegged means fixed. It was pegged at 4.6 percent for a long, long time, decade after decade. 4.6 percent. Is it an any decent return? In India, sometimes those days inflation rate went up to 25 percent, and the Treasury bill interest rate was fixed at 4.6 percent. So nobody was getting any return. Why government was doing it? You understand. Government didn't have the financial standing to repay any decent interest, so it was asking RBI, and the RBI is like my my step brother. I can ask him for help any time. Part of my family, and whether I pay him any interest rate, a decent interest rate, it really doesn't matter. Poor RBI sometimes got fed up with printing so much of notes, went to the market and tried to sell it. Otherwise, it is entirely upon them because after all, they look after monetary policy. And in macroeconomics, you know, if there is too much money chasing too few goods, what would happen? Prices would start shooting up, and in fact, that used to happen. Inflation used to be notorious. Again, we are back into kind of a days and months of high inflation. It wasn't there for a long time. We are back to it. I don't some mismanagement going on. Everybody is saying the entire economy is getting mismanaged currently. Beginning with the government and the central bank, everything is getting mismanaged. So we are back in very bad days because every time anybody from the economy, like the private sector, other than the government, giving an interview, including the other day NDTV was interviewing Narayan Murthy, Infosys, ex-boss, and yesterday I saw there was a investment summit going on in West Bengal, and there are some industrialists speaking. Just like us, with PowerPoints and all sorts of data, they're speaking. Oh, what they have to say is unbelievable. After a while, I got so depressed that government is underfunctioning so much, and RBI is mismanaging the, the economy so much. I, I switched it off and went to some other thing. I say it's impossible to watch. All right. So that used to be the case. Ad hoc bills. On the other hand, ordinary and the ordinary and the regular treasury bills, these are like other country treasury bills also, like the Western countries, developed country treasury bills. These will used to be sold through a market mechanism. What was the mechanism? The mechanism was they would call tender or put it through weekly auctions. <coughs> Both are kind of market because the buyers would come and bid, all right, and they would bid for the interest rate and also bid for the amount they want to buy. 
together government will take the lowest bid. Just like if you are going to construct a building, there are 10 contractors around, you ask for tender and then they come in sealed envelopes, the quotations and then in front of other people you open that and you select the lowest bidder. This is the thing. So, this has a market nature, this has a, a kind of a market dimension where market forces determine something. The ad hoc bill was government saying this much I want, this is the interest rate and it was pegged for years. All right. So, either through tender or through auction, you know how auction happens, auction is quick tender in some sense. Everybody gets together and everybody starts bidding. So, somebody said 7 percent and I want to buy this amount, somebody says something else all right and I want to buy this amount. Government has already announced say they need 10,000 crores, somebody says I need 1,000 crore I can I want to buy at this rate. Finally, through that bidding process which is an auction the job is done all right and there is an auctioneer with a hammer you have seen the bidding like uh, precious articles, paintings etcetera auctioneer stands with a hammer and keeps on saying and somebody raises a placard or a hand and says some amount. And finally, when it is decided it, it, it puts the hammer down with a bang with a huge noise saying over. So, weekly auction they arranged and tenders, tenders take more time it cannot weekly because tenders take months. You call a tender and you give them 10 days time to submit the tenders, then you announce a date when the tenders will be open and then some selection will be done. Are you with me so far? All right. Now, therefore, that was a better treasury bill in the eyes of a critique, in the eyes of the, in the central bank regular treasury bills. Now, I would be talking about the regular treasury bills because that what exists today ad hoc treasury bills they have wind up, they do not exist anymore. Because government realized after the reforms came in 1990s, it is just becoming too much of an indiscipline on our part and RBI has been insisting that on government, you stop that ad hoc bill, it is unmanageable, okay. I, how I cannot manage my, my accounts? Ad hoc bills have stopped, we now have only regular treasury bills, but there has been very funny thing about the regular treasury bills, some treasury bills were on and off, on and off and one has completely stopped, but I need to talk all of them a little bit to give you a complete perspective and today in India there are four categories of regular treasury bills. There are four categories of regular treasury bills in India. The four categories are this fellow here 14 day, 91 day, 180 day and 364, 182 day, 182 day and 364 day. There are four types with four different maturities, the type is in terms of the term of the bill. They have used government of India so far, now I am not talking about the British days what they had. Reserve Bank of India was created during the British days, then they were nationalized around 1949 or so. I am not talking about what kind of bills, government bills, treasury bills, British government used to use, I am not going to talk about that. I am talking about the post independence period. Now, it is very interesting that the 14 day, the shortest bill, shortest duration gone completely, they introduced that completely gone. The two most popular ones are today 91 and 364 and the 182 day bill came in went out for a while few years and then they came back again. So, I need to give you the data and want to tell you as to what happened ok. 
Before I go to the regular treasury bills, let me give you a history of the ad hoc bills. Indian banking system was very mature and you can imagine the British government was also on its way out. So, India had to start everything afresh, they have to develop their systems. These ad hoc bills however, which government of India used to use for a long time and extensively, these ad hoc bills were introduced in 1937 in Indian British period all right. and they had a very interesting thing during the British period and which continued after independence that there was an agreement between the government and the RBI, a very interesting agreement that if government wants ad hoc bills to be funded, financed through sale of ad hoc bills by the RBI, then government should maintain with the RBI an interest free minimum cash balance of 50 crores on Fridays and 4 crores on other days. Because RBI looks at it from a banking point of view, RBI is the banker of the government. That as a banker, if I have to give you money, I need that your cash is with me against which I will of course, give you money. If you have nothing with me and the entire thing is going from my pocket and again you are asking next week to give more money, it becomes very difficult. So, what they agreed, they started the agreement during the British days and I guess those days there were no regular treasury bills, they had ad hoc treasury bills that 50 crores on Fridays end of the week and 4 crores on any other day, there should be minimum balance. Whenever cash balance of the government will fall below this minimum, government would replenish the cash balance by borrowing from the RBI against the ad hoc bills. So, ad hoc bills came into existence as something which would be floated whenever government is say overspending and the minimum cash balance, their balance with RBI which is their banker is going down below a minimum limit. 50 crores on Friday and 4 crores on all other days. Whenever government's cash balance went like you have some money in your account, whenever you overspending, you cannot keep that minimum balance, then you have to take the responsibility by selling bills because by selling bills what is happening? government is borrowing from RBI to fill it up and also government now has a responsibility to pay it back. And treasury bills are money market instruments, they are not like you take money for 10 years, now for 10 years to shanti hai, 10 saal baad dekha jayega, aisa nahi hai, these are short term bills. So, ad hoc bills, I think ad hoc bills initially and was there when ad hoc bills were there, they were all 91 day bills. So far, I have gathered from the literature. All ad hoc bills were 91 day bill. So, within 3 months it will mature. So, this was the beginning or the introduction of ad hoc bills, how it came into existence. Government has its account like you and me have account with commercial bills, government have account as accounts with RBI where there is some cash balance. For our savings account also we need a minimum cash balance, I think it is 1000 rupees. If goes down below 1000 rupees, there is a penalty. They would ask the depositor to pay a penalty. So, here RBI's penalty is if it goes down below the minimum, is that government now you sell bills, borrow from us, fill it up the gap, and when you are borrowing, of course, you have the responsibility of a debtor, you have to return the money. Okay? But this borrowing those days, RBI was also so poor that RBI most of the time was printing money and there where it was getting unhappy because printing money is something which a monetary authority does not want to do often. Because if it is a monetary authority, it has to control the monetary economy and monetary economy sometimes people say earlier literature always said, these days also they say is a very important determining factor of inflation in a country. So, if the monetary authority goofs up management of uh, money supply, 
it can create an enormous amount of insertion. Later what happened even from the pre independence days and later they gradually what they did was RBI was borrowing so much of ad hoc money and the ad hoc money ad hoc bills were often deficit financed which is created by printing money. What happened was they started this is not usually known as a money market instrument of the government because they are not very short term. RBI advice and government agreed that they would sell what we know as know as bonds and that what they introduced, but I am not going to talk about that. They are called government dated securities. It is essentially bonds, long term bills, 2 years, 3 years, 4 years, 5 years, etcetera. So, this is what they did slowly introduced, but you can imagine central government central bank was just beginning its business those days. In India independence came new government the whole country is new you have to start everything from the beginning build the institutions. So, ad hoc bills went on for a while later a substitute one was created which I will not talk, but you will get these details in Bole's book professor Bole's book government dated securities which are essentially government bonds long term 5 years, 6 years, 4 years, 3 years whatever, but they are if they are more than 1 year we should not talk about that because it is not part of money market all right. Then some of you who have taken Indian economics the planning era came and you know what trouble we got into from third plan third, fourth, fifth enormous trouble in India you learnt all that. Now, where is the money coming from therefore, government of India was in big trouble. So, it was immense strain on the RBI to keep on funding government because government balance was never 4 crores and that 20 crores it was probably nearing 0 often. So, ad hoc bills were extensively used finally, September 9, 1994, 1994 after this reforms when the reforms started in India, government of India and RBI entered into after how many years then 50 may plan should be 44, 45 years they got into an agreement the agreement again between government of India and RBI that we would now phase out ad hoc bills completely no more ad hoc bills will be there we will return all the money that we have borrowed from you against ad hoc bills by 1997-98. By 1997-98 government of India promised RBI that we would phase out completely all ad hoc bills. So, they agreed upon various limits how much intra year and end of year they would have ad hoc bills during this period which they can reasonably return not more than that. However, what happened was whatever government promised government failed. So, when that miserably failed to phase out ad hoc bills because government is still in trouble financial trouble and ad hoc bills are still important. So, what you are saying is now you have to understand government finance position government data securities are already known thing in the market they are borrowing on a long term basis which they do not have to repay immediately they have 3 years to repay 4 years 5 years to repay. Then they have these regular bills are already known in the market some of them at least if not all of them. So, they are borrowing from the market. So, banks are lending to government non banks are lending you and me are buying them all right and RBI is of course, there in addition ad hoc bills were so important still that means, governments government of India was so much in financial trouble that they could not phase that out. So, in 1997 26 March, March a fresh agreement they arrived at a fresh agreement to discontinue, to discontinue the bill from 1st of April 1997 all right 
and all outstanding ad hoc bills and 91 day regular treasury bills on tap I will talk about that later were converted into a special security without specified maturity at an interest of 4.6 percent per annum. So, what they did was finally they put a stop on ad hoc bill by not being able to repay the money to RBI, but by converting these ad hoc bills and one more item RBI 91 day bill on tap I will talk about that. There were two kinds of 91 day bills are there were there. One was on tap, one was the auctioned and through tender etcetera. So, 91 day bill on tap jotha plus ad hoc bills they were all converted into some special securities of the government. Security means basically a bond paper or something which would annually pay whoever bought them either RBI or the banks or whoever have bought them or other governments. Government of India would pay them that same old interest rate 4.6 percent which is ridiculous big trouble 4.6 percent is not good they would pay them and with any specific maturity. So, what it has become then ad hoc bills you know a term a particular time or type of money market instrument I talked about that in the beginning of first topic without maturity they were converted into fixed interest bearing government security what is it called I have said I have uttered a name a word for these England for the first time they u they have was used in England in the 19th century or something like that what are they called government converted them into specified into special securities without any specified maturity that means government is not promising when I would return your money the principal, but I will keep on paying a nominal 4.6 percent interest to whoever have funded me in the past when I sold ad hoc bills this is what it is saying. Huh? What are they called in perpetuity yeah, in perpetuity of course, but what are they called Hmm? Yeah, consul. They were converted into a consul actually, which has no specific maturity. It will promise to pay you continuously, which often governments have done. England had did that. When England was in trouble at one point, it sold consuls where whoever bought them will get an interest rate, but there is no promise. This is not a typical bond not a typical bond, bond has a finite maturity period mentioned. No promise when they would return the principal or terminate that, close that, but it promises an interest rate which they will keep on paying to you and this what happened to the ad hoc bills. And one more thing was went into that package as far as my notes go what I have here, they are called. Uh, 91 day bill on tap 91 day etcetera I told you now they were all regular bills were sold either through auction or through tender, but the, there was a 91 day bill those days which was I have some data with me not much 91 day bill on tap what does it mean they are not announced anymore they are available on tap jabhi chahate kharid liji kyunki government ke hard time rupiah zaruri hai. So, whenever people had some extra cash thought government bills are safe because it is part of jilt edge market risk free they would go and open the tab basically ask across the counter give it to me like the way we go and buy jam and butter and bread they are always available it is not the shop announces today we are selling jam and butter or another day it announces today we are going to sell um, something else all right is always available. So, on tap there was a 91 day bill dono koi band kar diya converted them into special securities with a fixed interest rate without maturity console essentially console they were converted into consoles all right. All right then the 91 day bill came the regular bills these are the discussions I need to have and I have uh, 
some information on this. It's quite interesting how Government of India funding process went.